That's what I want to talk about this morning. This is our season of restoration. We're still declaring that the Lord is not done with this, this word yet. This is the year of the return. This is the year to, to build and rebuild. God is still rebuilding his people in this hour. God is still rebuilding, restoring, revitalizing relationships in this hour. God is restoring your health in this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't put that scripture in this slide. That's all right. I'll preach about it again next week in Jesus' name. Amen. God is restoring your inheritance in this hour. Amen. The question is, what is that in your, in your hand? Number one, God, God plans to reconcile a fallen and broken world back to himself. This hinges on the ability of his predestined church to reconcile mankind back to the Father. I'm just reviewing the points from last week. Is that all right? We're talking about restoration this morning. Number two, the many member of body of Christ that are given this assignment are known as the firstborn. Say that. Say, I am, I am. the firstborn. firstborn. The Bible said that Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. Where we left off last week, I want you to, to get this. We're going to get into finances pretty soon this year where we're going to talk about the first fruit offering. But before we talk about what we are offering, I want to talk about the fact that you are an offering. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? That you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. So I, I, I want to make sure you get that first before we, I want to talk about restoration, how God is restoring his people this morning. But I want to make sure before, before we get into how God is restoring you, I want to make sure you understand you're the firstborn though. I want to make sure you understand that you yourself are a first fruit offering. I want, to, I want to make sure before we talk about what's in your hand that you're going to give to God, I want to make sure before you release anything from your hand, you understand that you yourself are an offering, though. You yourself, you are a living sacrifice. You need to understand that first. You are the firstborn. That means you're valuable to God. That means you're a part of God's elect. When the Bible talks about the elect, when the Bible talks about those that are predestined before the world began to be to be a first fruit offering, he's talking about you. That's why you were here first. That's why you grew up. <laughs> Many of you grew up in the church. Without, without making a decision on your own, your parents brought you. Your daddy was a deacon. Your mama was a deaconess. Your father was an elder. Your, your great grandfather was a pastor. That happened because you're, you are a first fruit offering. God had to place a first fruit offering in the world so that the rest of the planet could be reconciled through you. Come on, let's raise your hand. I want you to get that first. Say that again. Say, I am, I am. a first fruit offering. First fruit. Say, I am, I am the firstborn. The first we talked about this before. I'm almost where I want to get already. Traditionally, the elect, I'm talking about you, were taught that you are selected, you are predestined to escape out of the world. But now I want you to understand that the reason why you are the elect, the reason why you are the selected is not to escape out of the world, but to reconcile the world back to the to the father. Are you still with me this morning? Yeah. You have the ability because you're the elect number four to restore. Say restore. restore. I told you I'm, I'm there already. Yeah. You have the ability because you are the elect to restore to replenish and subdue the earth back to the likeness of, of heaven. One, the, one, the major way you're doing that is because heaven is in you. There's an entire kingdom on the inside of you. And so you have the, the, the power to illuminate. You have the power to extend. You have the power to expand the kingdom of God from the, on the inside of you to the, to the world. Are you with me this morning? And then number five, I'm already where I wanted to get. To restore, write this down, this new, this one on the slide last week. To restore, the elect themselves must be restored in 2021. 
This is a year of restoration. I want to make sure you got that. We know this is the year to return. We know this is the year to rebuild. We know this is a year to arise and redeem. We know this is the year of the, the accelerant. Prophet Witherspoon and Apostle Kenya also came in and added to that word. Prophet Joanne Witherspoon said this is the year of the reward. I want, to, I want to pick up right where they left off. This is the year of the This is the year of the replevin. Did we hear that? Yeah. This she said this is Prophet Witherspoon said this is the year to redeem and restore. Yeah. And so I want to pick up right there in this the year of restoration. Go to Nehemiah chapter 1. This is the foundation of scripture. For 2021, I want to make sure you know that. We're in February now. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> God love you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 1. Say amen when you found that. Amen. amen. Nehemiah chronologically is toward the end of the Old Testament. But... In your Bible, it's toward the new, uh, the beginning of the Old Testament. Old Testament, I'm sorry. He's toward the end of the Old Covenant, but his book is toward the beginning of the Old Covenant. Are you all right with that? All right. Nehemiah chapter 1. I want to make sure you have this foundational scripture for the year of the return and rebuilding you, and then we're going to talk about restoration. Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Kisla in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, this is Nehemiah, the prophet speaking, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of, of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had, what, escaped, which were left of the the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and, and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is, is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with, with fire. And so I just want to Make sure one more time you know where we are in, in history. I told you before that Nehemiah was toward the end of the Old Testament, though his book is toward the beginning of the, of the Old Covenant. So I just want you to see in history where we are, where Queen Esther and the scribe, prophet Ezra were as it relates to to Nehemiah. You'll see that Ezra's book is right before the book of Nehemiah. How many of you know the story of Queen Esther? She was called to not only return herself as queen, but she was called to return her people back to favor in the sight of God and, and man. Nehemiah verse 4, chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words that the walls of Jerusalem were burned down, that the city was burned with fire, it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and, and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keeps covenant and mercy for them that do what? That love him and observe his underline that there those that love him and do what observe his commandments let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee both I and my father's house have sinned which have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have kept the commandments, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which you commanded your servant Moses. Verse 8, remember, I beseech you, the word that you commanded your servant 
Moses, saying, If you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if you turn, say turn. turn. That's what I want you to get this year. If you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, observe and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence. Okay, come on. This, this is a year of gathering. That's what we're doing this year. This is a year of reconciliation. To reconcile means that we have an assignment this year to gather God's people. We have an assignment this year to gather God's people from the four corners of the earth. Come on, I want you to get this down in your belly. This, this year, I want you to see yourself. I want you to consider yourself. I want you to perceive yourself as a shepherd that is gathering. That's your individual assignment this year. It is our collective assignment, but it's your individual assignment. The question is who you're gathering. I want you to be as a seer this year. I want you to be as a watchman, as an overseer this year, looking for sheep to gather. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not do what? Father, God is going to give you opportunities this year. Some of those opportunities are going to be at funerals. Some of those opportunities are going to be at weddings. Some of those opportunities are going to be when new babies are born in, in hospitals. Some of those opportunities are going to be on your job. Some of those opportunities are going to be at your school. But you should be as a shepherd who is gathering this year. God is using you as a shepherd who is gathering this year, who is reconciling the world to him, to himself. What verse was I on? Let's look at verse 9. But if you return unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though you were cast out into the uttermost part of heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and I will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my what? My name there. The, the, I want you to get God is setting his name on you. That's the place he want to set his name. God is no longer setting his name in temples. God is no longer writing his word on tablets of stones, but he's writing it on your heart. He's writing his name on your forehead. He's writing his name on you. The Holy Ghost and fire is on you. The kingdom is on you. Verse 10. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou has redeemed. Say redeemed. 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 Thou has redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord. I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear your name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy at the sight of what? Of this man. Okay, let's look at this one more time. I want to make sure you, you got this. this. This word turn or return is the Hebrew word shuva. Say shuva. It's the Hebrew word shuva or teshuva. Say teshuva. Teshuva. It means to return. It means to bring back. It means to come and go back. To repent. To restore. Say restore. To refresh. Repair. To put back. To relinquish. To give in payment to bring back, to recompense. It is a requital, a reversal, a revoking of the evil that was on your life. Are you with me this morning? And so what God is doing is he's beginning to shuva or teshuva this year. This is the year of the teshuva. That is the Hebrew year. That we are in the year 5781 is the year of the Teshuva. This is the year where God is repaying, God is returning, God is redeeming that which was, was lost. I think you're almost with me this morning. Let's go to chapter 2, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse, verse 1. What else happened, prophet Nehemiah? Well, it came to pass. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. 
Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres or graves, lies waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire and the king said to me for what dost thou make the request so i pray to the the god of what heaven, heaven. now you you <laughs> you see that before he tells him the request what does he do first he prays to the god of heaven verse five and i said unto the king if it please the king now that he prayed to the god of heaven and the god of heaven told him what his request should be he said, if it please the king and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto what? Unto Judah, unto the city of my father's graves, that I may do what? That I may build it. King said to me, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall your journey be? And when will you do what? When will you teshuva? So it pleased the king to do what? Send me, and I set him a what? A time. All right, go over to Isaiah 58. The prophet Nehemiah was sent to return. He was sent to return to rebuild the cities. He was sent to return to take back what the enemy has what? Has stolen. Isaiah 58, verse 11 and, and 12. Let's just look at verse 12 really quick. Verse 12 says, And they that shall be of thee shall build, there's that word again, the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the what? Breach the restore or the shuv of paths to do what? Dwell in. So, so uh, teshuva means return or to restore, and then a shuv is a restorer. So you shall be called the repairer of the, the breach, the restorer, or the shuv of paths to do what? Dwell in. Now, what I want you to get, I want you to begin to walk in this. I want to make sure you received it. I'm talking about restoration. Say restoration. restoration. Before you can be the shoes, before you can be a repairer of the breach or a restorer of paths to dwell in, what God is going to do in 2021 first is restore you. That's who has to be healed. This is a year of healing. This is a year of restoration. How do we how do we know that? Let's look at the part in blue. Can we do that? Yeah. Let's look at verse 11. And the Lord shall do what? Guide, Guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in, in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a water garden and like a spring of waters whose waters do what? They are not. And so what's be, before you can be a restorer of paths to dwell in, before you can be a repairer of the breach, you must first be restored. This is a year of restoration. This is a year of restitution. There is something that you lost that God is bringing back into your hand. Come on, you got to get this down in you. There is something that was released and stolen from your hand that God intends to replace that thing. God intends to restore that which was lost. Yes, God is calling you to be a repairer. Yes, God is calling you to be a shoe. But before he does that, there are some things that God must return into your house that the enemy has stolen. So your cup can overflow. So that you can have something to share with him that is in lack. Come on, I want you to get that if we don't go any further. This is a year of healing. This is a year of restoration. God is revitalizing you. God said to the prophet Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? And so he breathed breath into it. He spoke to the bones 
and the breath came from the north, south, east, and the west and caused those bones to get up, caused that which was broken, caused that which was, was torn down, caused that which was lost to arise. This is the year to arise and redeem. God is redeeming his people this year. God is restoring his people this year. Come on, you got to receive it. He's doing that so that you shall be called the repairer of the, of the breach. Before he does that, you got to be repaired. Before he does that, you got to be renewed. Before he does that, your maintenance plan, your insurance plan must be redeemed. Before he does that, a claim must be fulfilled on that which is broken over your life. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to do what? How many of you are getting this this morning? Okay, let's make it. Simple. Here it is. God wants to restore you in 2021 uh -huh. so you can restore others. Amen. Amen. That sounds simple, doesn't it? Yes. Let's say it once more. Lay hands on your own self while we say it by faith this time. Put the word me in it. I want you to get this. God wants to restore me in 2021. Put the word us in it. God wants to restore us in 2021 so that we can. I think you're beginning to get this by faith. Go to Joel chapter 2. I just need two amens. Amen. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. Y'all know that song, he is jealous for me. <laughs> then will the Lord be jealous for his, his land and pity his, his people. Yes, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. <laughs> There's a song that says, he has done great things for me, therefore I shall be glad. Are you with me this morning? Let's go to verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, there it is, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you, come on, you got to get this, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain, not in the second, third, fourth, or fifth, but from the beginning in the first month. Come on, you got to get this. And the floors shall be full of, of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and, and oil. <laughs> And I will restore to you the years. Come on, I want you to, you got to know what year it is. This, <laughs> God is restoring the years. That's what he's trying to do. 
But you got to get your faith in it. You got to get your hope in it. The hope of your sal salvation. He said, I'm going to restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My great army, which I sent among you. That, that word restore there is the Hebrew word shalam. Say shalam. It sounds like its sister word. They come from the same root word, shalom. You know that Jehovah shalom, or when we say shalom, means what? Peace. And so when it, when it says, I will restore to you the years, what it's trying to say is that I'm going to bring back your years of, of peace. Do you see that in the scripture? That peace signifies that God is bringing back to completeness or wholeness a thing that was broken. That's what shalom, which sounds like shalom means. Are you with me? And I will restore to you the years. I'm going to make it complete. Everything that was broken, I'm going to begin to bring peace to it again. Every Come on, everything that caused you anxiety, everything that caused you to worry, every, everything that caused because of anxiety, sickness, and disease to come on your body in this year of restoration, I'm going to bring peace. I'm going to bring shalom or shalom again to that thing. I'm going to, to shalom to you the years that the locust has eaten. God is restoring years. God is restoring times and seasons in which you are in sorrow. The scripture said weeping may endure for a, a night, but joy shall come in the the morning. This is the year of the shalom. This is the year of restoration. God is restoring the years. How, apostle, is God going to do it? Can you show it in the scriptures? You know I can. Go to Joel. Keep reading verse 26. And you shall eat in what? Plenty and be satisfied. There's that same language from Isaiah. Do you see it? And praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall not be what? Ashamed. Ashamed. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall not be what? Ashamed. God wants to erase God wants to eradicate your, your shame. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Come on, let's go to Exodus 22. Come on, I don't have that much time. I got to tell you how he's going to do it. I want you to get your faith set. Don't worry about how I'm going to preach it in service number two. I don't know either. <laughs> Exodus 22, verse 1. I just need two amens. Amen. Exodus 22, verse 1. This is, come on, you got to get this. This is how, are you with me, Brother Abel? This is how it's going to happen. Exodus 22, verse 1. This is how God is going to restore you, Minister Nikki. You are looking to be restored. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a what? Oh, come on. You got to see this already. He's restoring. Jesus said the thief cometh. For to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Messiah said that. Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus, the Messiah. If a man steal an ox or a sheep, and this is what God is doing this year. Come on, Sister BJ, you got to get this. 
Sister BJ, if anybody steal your oxtails this year, or Sister BJ, if anybody steal your lamb this year and kill it and sell it, he going to have to bring you five oxtails this year and four lamb sandwiches this year. If a thief, you got to make the gospel relevant. Is it all right? If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he died, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he shall make full restitution. Come on, you got to get these words. There's a lot of R. This is the year of the R. If he don't have anything, if he don't have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, this Bible for if he be caught red handed or if he be caught with his hand in the cookie jar. What you need, <laughs> what you need to do this year is catch the thief stealing from you this year. Be not afraid. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall shalam double. Let's look at another scripture. You didn't like that one. Go to Proverbs chapter 6. I was going to give you three witnesses, but I knew I wasn't going to have enough time. I was right. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm trying to help you understand now that you are okay that this is the year of restoration. I'm trying to get you to see how you're going to be restored. Proverbs chapter, what did I say? Six. God bless Dr. K.C. Price who passed away two evenings ago. He taught me to wait till y'all get to the scriptures before I show it to you. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 30. Men do not despise a, a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is what? Hungry. People don't care. But if he be what? Found. Come on, I want you to, you got to get how to execute the covenant. It's not just about the covenant if you don't understand it, though. It's not just about the contract if you don't know how to execute it. What the word of God is trying to get you to see is how God is going to restore you. What it's trying to get you to see is that you receive more according to the contract. You receive more according to the covenant, Sister Christy, if you catch the thief while it's still in his hand. If you catch him and it's not in his hand, you don't get as much in return. Do you see it in the scriptures? But that's look. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be what? Found, what does he have to do? He has to shalam sevenfold in this example. One example, he has to give you double for your trouble. In another example, he has to give you how much? Seven, four. All I'm trying to, to get you to see in this year of restoration is that God does not intend to just the when we speak about salvation, the word salvation means to salvage or restore. And so when we talk about restoration, normally what we are saying is that you are going to be returned back to your original position. That is not only what God is doing in 2021. God is not attempting in 2021 to return you only back to your original position. God is trying to get you to your original position and then some. Do you see it in the scriptures? When you are shalammed, 
when you are restored, when restitution comes upon you, if you catch him with it in his, in his hand, then you must not just be restored back to your original position, but the thief has to make sure that you're restored sevenfold. Yes. Yes. He shall give all the substance of his what? House. All right, this is the last thing. I'm going to let you get this. And then you can just digest this on your own this week. God wants to restore us beyond. Say beyond. beyond. This is good. God wants to restore us beyond our original state in 2021. Yes. He wants to restore you to a state of increase. Yes. So you can restore others. God wants to give you the increase so that you will have enough to reconcile the world to, to Christ. Did you get that? Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this seed of restoration, reconciliation, redemption, recompense, restitution that you are bringing about by your own divine favor, and by your own divine will, by your own divine hand. Thank you that you've made us your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works before the world began to your glory. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Father, we thank you that you're renewing us as your firstborn. We thank you that you're renewing and restoring us as your first fruit offering as you've commanded us to present our bodies as living sacrifice, which are holy and acceptable unto you. This is our reasonable service. And Father, we ask that you just begin to breathe on us in a new way, that you'll begin to breathe on us the winds of refreshing, that you'll begin to breathe on us the winds of restoration, that you'll begin to breathe on us the winds of, of healing, that you'll begin to breathe on us the winds of, of restitution that we might be made whole and complete and receive the double and receive the sevenfold that the enemy has stolen from our hands, that we might be made healed, whole, and set free in every way. If you agree with that prayer, say in Jesus' name. Jesus.